it always feels like I'm I'm going back home and uh, uh, significant things um, about my life and, 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 and my spiritual journey is always revealed to me in the Kalahari. I it's literally just being. It's not a, you're not pretending to do things. It is, you're sitting with the people, you're listening to their stories. I'm going to hand over to a person who's usually just a shadow in the background. And she's going to be the host. And that shadow, her name is Shanette Martin. And she is the director of South Roots International. And she's going to be leading our task for today. Thanks, Mary. Um, so who of you have heard of the Kalahari? Um, Nicole and Caitlin and Mary, uh, you guys can just use your reactions to, to give us reactions, right? If we can't see you. Okay, who has never heard of the Kalari? Nobody. That's good. Um, Philippe and Rihanna, you need to come join us in the Kalahari. It is a desert. It is a semi-desert. And um, so we wanted to just speak a little bit about the experiences that we have had there. But why are we doing it today is because it's kind of like a culmination of everything we've been doing around nature, around the climate change, all those things. Um, and just, you know, if we think of what we experience every year that we go there, um, what happens if this is all lost? What happens um, when we can't go there anymore? I mean, we've, um, in 2000, Mary introduced me to the Kalahari. And since then, I've pretty much gone every year um, there's a couple of years that, that we missed, but it's almost like I have to go there every year to just have the experience. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit um, with the experiences that we have then what we do. And, but I'd like you to think of your own context as well. And then we, later on, we will just speak a little bit more about that. So let me just share a screen quickly. Um, of the South Roots guys, who of you have been to the Kalahari? I can't see now because I'm sharing. Let me see if I can get more of you on my view. Can you see my screen? Okay. Um, so this is what it's like at night time in the Kalahari. So this is where, um, actually, first, let me, let me ask Mary. Mary, what, what was your motivation for us doing this today? Why, what's important to you in relation to the Kalahari um, since you've been going there for years and years? Um, for me personally, it's, it's the one place place where I, I really connect with how much we rely on nature. Um, I find a greater spiritual connection there um, because in the city, with all the technology um, that's around us, um, we, we become very self-reliant. We become very reliant on, on technology. And so my one big impact is that when you go there, um, you feel very exposed. You're very exposed to the elements. And you suddenly become, I suddenly became aware of um, the rising of the sun, the setting of the moon. Time became a much longer, um, you know, expanse around me. And also how the elements dictated what you did in that day. So, for example, if the wind was blowing, that you might have planned to meet somebody, but they wouldn't meet you that day. Um, because the wind is blowing and so how you really um, you were no longer so self-sufficient and I understood um, pre-industrialized industrialized living far far greater to a far greater extent I think that's enough for me okay thanks Mary um, I see Philippe got lost but he's hopefully coming back in Okay, so this beautiful picture, can you see the beautiful picture of the stars? Can everyone see it? Okay, so this was, yeah. this was taken by a professional French photographer. 
um, who joined us in, in the Kalahari. And so at nighttime, you can see the stars very, very clearly, but this is just a really good shot to, to bring out the detail. Um, so what we, what we do, uh, we go, we drive, it's about a 10, 10 hours that we drive, and then um, we sleep over in a, in a town before we go into the desert. And then we drive in and we go and we set up camp under a tree. And the local people there, um, since we've been going there, they call it the spiritual tree. In Afrikaans, they said the gister like a boom. Um, and they, they call it the spiritual tree. We don't know who we're going to see. We don't know who we're going to meet. Um, we set up and we light our fire and we make our supper and then we just start, we sing or we just, you know, enjoy the night sky and, and soon you just have visitors starting to arrive under the tree and we don't know where they're coming from. Um, but until you have a couple of people sitting around the tree and then you start, um, you, either you know them from the time before or you start making relationships with them and then from there after, we start doing things with them in the desert. And so some of the things that we do, we have um, one of the Bushmen, so sorry, the, the people of the Kalahari that we are specifically working with are called the Kumani San, and they call themselves Bushmen as well. So they teach us everything about their crafts. Um, they teach, they take us on a walkabout to look at uh, the animals, to look at the tracks. They teach us about the land. If there's a big hole, they, you know, we, we what's in that hole? Uh, where does it come from? And all of a sudden you start realizing that there's so much around you that you would never actually stop and look at. And something where it looks like it's a desert, where it looks like there's nothingness, all of a sudden the people of the land start showing you that there's so much that can be found. And so we've had times where um, we have been filming with them. And so, uh, yeah, you can see Nic Nicole. All of you know Nicole. She's at the back behind Anaret, uh, one of our Kalahari Bushman friends. And they really start teaching us the traditional way. So they, they, she has an ostrich egg and they fill it with water. And when they go hunting, then they can bury the, the ostrich egg and then they use it, you know, they can drink the water. Uh, they find it on the on their way when they go when someone else comes hunting, and or they will take us um, tracking. And so here we can see Selby. Some of you know Selby from Namibia. Namibia. He used to join us on the meetings, and he is going tracking with Patat. And of course, they're looking for animal that they can, you know, feed their own family. And here we have Grasha. She is just chilling in some of the shade of the grass. It gets extremely hot there um, with patat. And, uh, and of course, this is just a time where, um, of, of course, we're just learning and learning. And you can't imagine and believe how much you can learn in a place that seems like there's nothing. And so Auntie Mary introduced us to um, one of the artists of the Kalahari who has since uh, passed away. But so they use the ostrich eggs for, for, uh, to do their artwork. You can see some of the crafts that they do as well with their beadwork and so on. And so we just start then seeing the color, what, what can actually come out of the Kalahari. Um, there's Sulivia, a much younger Sulivia. And of course she was taught how to, they teach us how to sh shoot bow and arrow. So Olivia was, she's actually known as the queen of the Kalahari. So Olivia, don't you just want to share a little bit about your experience that you've had um, going to the Kalahari? Um, so this, we put up a target and then we, you know, shoot the targets and you can see who's, who can do it and who can't. So Olivia, are, are you there? And in the meantime, I'll just show you that's um, Grasha and Nicole. And so we exchange in song and dance as well. So here, uh, Grasha's showing a traditional koi 
dance to and then they would show us their dances from the Kalahari. So Livia? Hello. Hi everybody. I'm just sharing some of my experience in it. Yes. Ooh. When we don't go to the Kalahari, it, it feels like something's missing in the year because we go annually. Um, every year we go. Um, so when we don't go, it feels like it, it really feels like we are a part of we part of the Kalahari, we part of the people of the land. Um, and it's literally just being. It's not a you're not pretending to do things. It is you sitting with the people, you are listening to their stories. Well, there's not much you can do, so <laughs> you kind of forced to just be. But it's a good thing because when we're in the city, it's all busyness and it's crazy and you don't have time to think. Everything is do, 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 do. So the Kalahari, you know, expects of you to just be. And in that space, you you are rejuvenated. You just feel like when you go back to the city, I'm ready to take on whatever is coming my way. Um, I feel like also because we are an extension, I feel like I know we are an extension of the land. So doing that annually, I just does something, you know. Do you agree, guys? Yes. 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 So we haven't been there this year, so I, yeah, we look, pop up. <laughs> we need some rejuvenation, but yeah, it is a part of us. Gracias. Uh, hi, everyone. <laughs> um, yeah, like Sulevia said, um, I know for me, the Kalahari, Kalahari is always a, a spiritual experience as well. Um, to me, it feels like going back. Um, I don't know, like, yeah. It always feels like I'm I'm going back home and it, significant things um, about my life and, 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 and my spiritual journey is always revealed to me in the Kalahari. I feel vulnerable and naked and exposed <laughs> in the Kalahari. Um, one of my, my, my the latest, um, um, once we went to the Kalahari, we went with a very rich guy. Um, he's a millionaire. Um, <laughs> but in, 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 during that week, to me, it was like, money literally means nothing in this space. Um, and so uh, to me, it was so, so every time I just, I, it's, it's like these new revelations come like, what is really of value in life? Um, people are important. Um, and there's, there's commonalities in our culture and, and we all need shelter and we all need to be loved and we all need, and, um, and so if you don't have those things, then, then you can't survive. So everything else is unnecessary, um, trimmings that, that, that I don't actually need. So it always takes me to go back to the Kalahari to, <laughs> to appreciate the finer things in life. Um. Yeah, I, I love working with the people. I love yes. sitting and hearing the stories of the elders. Um, the, 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 the Bushman talks in riddles. Um, in, in, in ways that I sometimes have to look at Shanet, who's English, to help me understand what was just said. Um, and there's so, so much depth in, depth in the people. Um, and yeah, it's always a rich experience to go. It's very hot. Um, but yeah, so Nicole, do you want to share anything? <laughs> yes, hello everyone. So everything that they've said and shared, um, but one thing for me is always that there's, it's the Kalahari Desert, right? And there's like nothingness, <laughs> like there's sand and there's a tree and here's a bush and more sand. <laughs> more sand. <laughs> but there's so much to learn from the Kala, from the Bushmen in the Kalahari. Like from the crafts to making fire to this to that, there's so much. Um, it, and it's basic things. It's like ways to love, not to survive, to love. And um, so so that's like yeah, that's a, like I always go whenever I go, I go with the expectation to learn and not to give to the people or teach the people or say that or, or all of that but to, to actually learn to to learn how to live in 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 this modern life you know find other ways to live and so like what i always enjoy is the what what when they teach us their crafts or you know they they have the ostrich egg and then they there's like smaller pieces and you just it's just brilliant how they do these things out of nothing <laughs> and i'm like 
Yo, I would not have thought of that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but it's always so cool to see how what they can do with their hands, what they can do with basic things. Um, yes, it's it's everything that they have said. It's a lifetime experience, like, like Sulavia said. When we when we don't go, so we haven't been able to go for what is it two years? Two years. So I'm just feeling I need to get out of this busy, <laughs> hectic life and just you know breathe. And it's so clear, like you saw the picture, you can actually see the stars. If you're in the city, you you won't notice it, but maybe now tonight when you look out and you're trying to see the stars, you 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 you'll catch the very bright star over there, and, but you won't really see the stars. And when you're over there, it's just like the stars they feel within within reach, and so everything feels and seems a bit more clear. Yeah. Yes, uh, so for me, I had two, I've been to the Calari twice, <laughs> my first time was with Auntie Mary and a group of guys, I was the only female, um, but just <laughs> even thinking now of those two experiences, so the first experience, like, um, I couldn't be in a tent because I was the only girl, so I had to be in a house, so I didn't really have um, such a a you know everywhere sort of with the people with the land type of experience until i joined south roots and then uh, we actually went to the people and we sat for a day and we just spoke and um even just seeing the pictures of the arch you know that on tishanet here on the powerpoint like i'm so i'm so reminded of how like when i saw that um especially because i i had this gift of visual art but i wasn't too serious about it but i was so touched in the fact that they um, like even just hearing the process of making it and, and why and what it means and, and what it symbolizes. I was like, yo, that like they're so rich. And I was able to look at myself and be like, what do I have? What do I carry? You know, so I was very inspired in that. Um, but yeah, like Rasia said, you know, you really appreciate the finer things of life. Like everybody is equal. There's no sort of hierarchy. Someone gets a shower, you don't get a shower. We all don't shower. <laughs> you know, you really, there's just, there's no sort of those. So when you come back to the city, it's like, whoa, um, do these um, hierarchies really matter at the end of the day? You know, so appreciating the finer things of life. And I was just, I was, I personally walked away so inspired and and I wanted to go back like now knowing what I know now <laughs> you know about just different cultures and you know so much that we have you know working with Arrow and, and being with South Roots to go back and actually hear more um because I, I remember we had a few stories like I think I can recall like three um yeah but to, to actually document it also because <laughs> I remember bits and bits here yeah, and then my Afrikaans isn't so so grand. <laughs> but now it is, you know, so to go back and really hear more. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I can sense a little bit, but yeah, that's a Kalari, guys. Beautiful place, beautiful people. Yeah. Auntie Mary. Auntie Mary. Angela, tell them about your experience with the meerkat. So I was the only female, right? And so Auntie, Auntie Mary and I, I think the, our guide at the time, they said that the meerkats, they look for the weakest link in the pack. <laughs> so they tried to keep me in the front, you know, because if you're at the back, they assume that you're the weakest link. But they still came for me. I was like, wow. And wasn't it a female too? But anyways, <laughs> so she came and she just nipped my, yeah. my wheel at the back. And I was like, oh my gosh, we had to go and get injections. And... <laughs> But yeah, fun stuff. <laughs> uh, uh. Sorry, I don't want to put Felipe and Rihanna off going to the Kalahari, but that was just an interesting thing of how, yes, that I don't know if you know what a meerkat is, like a mongoose, how it actually chose what it thought was the weakest, and that was poor little Angela. <laughs> okay, Mary, what has been one of your highlights? Um, I think my highlight is always the fact that you that you have a group of people living in the Kalahari who are in touch with their cultural traditions, but that they are modern people. Mm. That is my highlight every time. That if if I speak to Isaac Kraper, he he is so knowledgeable about everything happening with COVID all over the world. He has traveled the world representing his culture. 
He dresses, you know, in modern clothing. He's now got a, a house, uh, you know, it's like a small, almost like an RDP house. But yet he is so in touch with his cultural heritage as well. So that is always my highlight, that that that, that the Kamani San or the Bushmen there are people of the present, but they are so in touch with their past as well. That, that's mm. always my highlight. Thanks, Mary. So I'm just going to um, try and show a video. Hopefully it plays OK. Um, yeah. And just to give you a little taste of it. Can you see the video? just an, a, a time actually when we went with those very rich people um, uh, and, and Selby thought he would climb into a porcupine hole and then they were teasing him as though there was a snake or something because there are a lot of snakes there. Anyway, so you can hear that, that many of us have had amazing experiences there and so um, what I'd like to hear is are there some of the Arrow team there that have had some experiences? Uh, any of the Arrow team there that have been to the Kalahari? Vincent, have you? Did you go? No. Vincent, as a creative photographer and all, you will love it. <laughs> yeah. I think um, Nicole and Caitlin have been. Jeanette. Nicole and Caitlin, let's hear. What are, what are some of your highlights there? Um, when we went, it was all girls. And I think one of my favorite parts was sleeping in a tent full of girls. The 11 of us in one tent, sharing stories at night, staying up, talking, getting to know each other. And then during the day, seeing some of the best views, the best picture perfect moments, you know, that you see on the internet of nature and stuff. Mm -hmm. But actually seeing it for yourself, it's a whole different experience. I don't know what did you like. What was that experience? Was it what? How was it coming from the city? Because Durban's also quite um, uh, highly populated, and now you're coming to the sparse, open skies, open uh, land. So how was that for you? It was. It changed my mindset. You know, since that, oh, where we stay, it's so overcrowded and polluted that. When you go there, it's it feels like you're the only people that's there. It doesn't feel like anyone else is around. And like everyone has been saying, it's an experience where you do become one with like the land. It was very nice. Mm. Any you you both went, right? Did you? Yes. yes. <laughs> Talk you. Um our experience was thrilling and it was actually a lot of fun and nature the difference between the city and where we were it was like a vast difference and the the sky oh, at night time the stars were amazing it's something i've never witnessed ever and it was just like magnified by a thousand it was beautiful and experiencing this with other people was also really nice and talking to the Khoisan, at first I was like really confused because I didn't understand what they were saying. But the more you look at them and um, watch what they're doing, it's just really surprising and it was very nice. 
Thank you. Tamir, did you go? No? Not yet. And Casey, not yet. Casey, hopefully you'll go next year. So, um, yeah, so Philippe or Rihanna, I know you can't talk. If, if you can, that would be great. But um, Philippe, do you have some experiences of the same sort of things where you've come and you've been in city life, then all of a sudden you come out into this place of nature. Um, and if you have, where was it and how was it for you? Philippe? Hello? Hi. Yes. Hi, yes. So I, it reminds me your, uh, when you were speaking about um, uh, sleeping in the desert in Morocco. That is the trip, and we could uh, we could sleep there, and also in Egypt with uh, with other friends. Like we went also and um, camping, went like into a haima, like they made a camping for us, um, not from from from. A Yes. and the nothingness. Can you hear me? Could you I hear? Sometimes, you're sometimes freezing. So what, what <laughs> I heard was the experience of like the, the nothingness in, in the environment. Yeah, like only sand and... Native people that could explain to me everything that is going, that is going on in the desert. Sorry, Philippe, you're, you're freezing. And this is frozen. always great. <laughs> Sorry if my connection is very bad. Can you hear me? Switch your, switch your video off and let's see if it's better. Okay, yes. Good idea. Are you talking? And travel very economic, in a very low budget. So this push you to take out the best from each place and eat the local food and use the local facilities and everything. So. Yeah. That is amazing. Um, also, you know, experiencing. Within families the of, of the same place, like um, eating their food and sleeping in, uh, in huts like them. But this is like very enjoyable. Uh, this is like changing your life. Mm, it is. So what is... Other place. Philippe, just give me a thumbs up when you finish speaking, because I don't want to interrupt you, but I'm um, losing done. you. I'm done. Okay. Yeah. Mm. It, yeah, it is just amazing to, to go to different places. And I love that you said you, you're going to nothingness. Yet in that nothingness, there's so much fullness of something. So what is it that you experience when you come into those places of nature? And um, Angelique or Monique, did you go to Kalahari at all? No, we didn't attend. Okay. And Mary? No? No, we didn't get a chance to go either. Okay. Um, and do you have anything to share where you've been to a place where um, you've experienced just an overwhelming ex um, experience of, of nature and, you know, you, you always just feel like you want to go back there or you want to experience it again? Tamiel, Casey, you too. Um, I went to the, the Nelson Mandela Square or oh, the cube, the cube, the Nelson Mandela cube. And I stood, um, it's a grounds, and I stood at the edge of the grounds. And when you stand there, you basically see the whole of Durban. And in the night, it just looks beautiful. In the day, the sky wasn't blue. It was like, it was like a shade of purple and pink. And I got pictures which I can send. I was, I was mesmerized by the view. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was beautiful. 
So what makes it beautiful to you? Is it, is it about the space, the openness? What is it? It's more, for me, I like um, a lot of people and crowds and getting to know a lot of people. So when I stood there, I could see everyone talking. There was, um, at, right at the bottom, there was a family having a braai. Like you could just see the world coming together. That was like, that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Casey? Um, I would actually say the song is connected to our body recently. Just staying there and, and getting the water. It's actually it's very calming from the busy life in the city and then coming to an extra full of nature and um, culture. So just sitting there and just listening to the water flow is it's very, very calming and very peaceful. Where was that, Casey? Sorry, I missed where it was. Where? Sorry. 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 Well, your sound is breaking up. Well, it sounds like there's movement on your mic. Um, it was in Westville, actually. Oh, Westville, Westville, yeah. Okay, nice. Was, was that at the okay. point? Yeah. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. Rihanna, you can't talk? Angela? Um, yes, Auntie Chanel. Uh, while everyone was sharing, I just um, remembered. So we also went the second time with um, Noemi. She's also French and she's a visual artist. And um, I was also very inspired by how she used uh, rooibos tea bags and fire and just stuff from the land there to create. I was like, wow, you know, um, and that's something that I would do, like if we had to go back. Um, but to any land specifically, like what does that land have um, and how can I create from that? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Angela. Uh, so I remember the one time we took um, ex-gangsters up uh, to the Kalahari. And, you know, in the Kalahari, there are lions. The sun is extreme. There are thorns. There are all sorts of things. Um, non -pilo. And um, so... Um, it's, it's, you think that you are so um, powerful as this gangster, but you come into that environment and all of a sudden you just see how small you really are in this whole universe, you know. Um, and it was very impacting for them. And then, of course, the other thing, we wanted to teach them about water conservation and things like that. And so each person had a litre of water a day that they could brush their teeth and so um, besides drinking that they were only allowed a liter of water you know for, for bathing and that and it was just amazing how when they went home and you know in their homes um, it's in a community where the sewage just runs out on the streets and um, there's always such wastage of water and how it really just impacted them to try and save water and how precious water is and so these experiences are always life transforming um yeah is there anyone else who still has a a story because if oh, vincent vincent you've as a photographer you've been to beautiful places i'm sure Share no, with no not really i haven't been to a lot of beautiful places i think the only place i've been to is just here in kzn transclough it's like a uh what do you call these places um nature reserve yeah it's like a nature reserve that's the only place that i've been to uh actually envy all of you guys have been to the kalahari <laughs> but we must talk... take you vincent <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Julie. Love it. Yeah. Tell, tell us more about it vincent is it a um so is it very green i mean that yeah, it very is. contrasting it is very green there is on the other side well there's like different parts that you can take there's one that takes you to a waterfall there's the other one that takes you to a, like a nature reserve where you can see animals 
And I think I, I took the one that takes us to the waterfall because we we're just going like on a hike with a couple of friends of mine. And I took a couple of pictures there. But yeah, it is like what you're saying. It, it's it's quite beautiful. But also the unfortunate thing is like the people that go there, they you know take their plastic bottles and it's uh, packets of sweets just laying in the an environment which is which kind of ruins the experience for someone like me that just wants to appreciate uh, nature in its purest form so yeah mm-hmm. but it was a really beautiful experience yeah and you feel rejuvenated after you experience it right um there was a time i did a, a documentary on the the culling of elephants because of too many elephants um in southern africa and it was a terrible thing because you, you know they were they had to kill the elephants and then some of the babies are left behind and then but I spent two weeks in, in one of the game parks and when I was coming out I didn't want to come out I was like it was such a shock to my system just getting to a garage for petrol um, I, I was just like no send me back to the into the bush you know um, so yeah so just I think in in relation to everything that we we've been speaking about over the past however many months um, you know there's so much that we miss we can go day by day by day um doing the things that we we do best but there's these times where we just need to get out into nature and to connect again um rian i don't know how where you guys um are located and if you've got like open spaces at all i know with such a small little island I can speak now. <laughs> oh yeah go for it um so sorry what did you want me to share yeah so like your area that you're in um like do you have that opportunity to get out into open spaces and yeah so we do actually so where we're based in the building we do actually have like a, a massive green space at the back so we encourage young people to like plant stuff so we've been planting food there i think there's some sunflowers there at the moment and then also down the road there's an allotment so allotments are like a massive garden for people that don't actually have gardens and there's a massive community of it. So one of our members, Star, she'll bring like the kids over and it's a lot of green space and she gets to meet like other people and get to know like what they're growing and why they're growing. So like back in the Caribbean, there's this vegetable called Kalalu. So there's a lot of um, Caribbean people that are in the, this allotment and they all kind of bond with the fact that there's this vegetable can't get in the Caribbean but they all decided to kind of grow it here and then sell it to people and stuff like that so I think that's really nice um and yeah yeah that's amazing it's it's um we were with Arrow and um they were busy doing their garden and I don't know Tamia were you part of the garden garden who of you um I was there when we first created the garden yes yeah I was there and now, so you you think, right, that you, oh, it's going to be hard work and that, but it's very therapeutic, isn't it? Getting your hands it into is. the soil. It is. Yeah. It is. It really is. And it teaches you, it teaches you to be very gentle because to deal with soil. And we were so scared that we don't have green fingers and we were scared that all the plants we were planting were going to die. So we were very, very gentle. It teaches you a lot. And how's it doing now? Is it growing? Yes, it is. It is. Yeah. I'll ask Mr. Lamini to take pictures and then we'll send them to Auntie Mary. Yeah, that's great. And so you just see like out of the hard work that you've put in, although it's nice and therapeutic, you're now seeing also the, the fruit that is coming out and you, and you see that, that you actually can um, uh, promote life. And yeah, so these little trips that we have and um, I think it's amazing, Rihanna, what you guys are, that you do that and that people have that opportunity where they can, you know, plant the things that, that they want to plant. I had it at my home recently. Um, I woke up really early one morning. My sister's like, it's weekend. You need to rest. And I'm like, no, this is my rest. If I can get my hands in the soil, this is going to help me to rest, you know. Um, so, so yeah, so we're going to break into groups and, and just to that you can, if there's anything more that you'd like to share in your group, but also just a creative response to, to what we, we're talking about now. So it's really about coming out from this crazy world that we have or how in this crazy world do we find these spaces where we can actually appreciate how we are part of the world and now we are interdependent with the rest of creation um yeah so anything that that comes up so whether it's a a, a poem that doesn't have to rhyme whether it's a spoken word doesn't matter um if it's a song whatever you want to do 
so we're going to give about 20 minutes, maybe 15 minutes, um, yeah, for you to come up with something in your group, and then we will just end off with, with sharing that. Is that okay? Everyone fine with that? I, South Roots, you're so massive, so the bulk of your, you're all going to be together. So I wonder if you can't break up even within your own group there. Um, first hear what everyone has to say in your breakaway, but then maybe you do two um, art responses within that, that group. Okay, some of you came in late, so I don't know that you're in the breakout rooms, but we'll sort it out. So here we go.